Is your small business growing? That's the question we address right here on the Grow Your Biz Show. It's where we interview strategic entrepreneurs who inform and inspire you on your solopreneur or small company journey. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Grow Your Biz Show. Hello and welcome to the Grow Your Biz Show. This is episode number 69 of the program and I'm pleased that you've joined us. My name is Paul Madsen and I'm the host of the program. Before I introduce Taylor and Spencer to you, I would like to mention briefly, coming up is a seminar I'm leading through Metropolitan Community College on January 26, 2019. The seminar, guys, is called Self Promotion for the Self Employed. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, yes, uh, thanks for saying that. <laughs> Coming up, if you want to learn more, check out the brochure here in your mail or go online with Metro or check out my website, growmedia.com. End of commercial. On to more important things. Taylor, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Paul. Spencer, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. These gentlemen are from the company called AppSki. And AppSki is, I'll let them tell you much more about it as we go along before we get started. Or as we get started, I always like to ask, gentlemen, what business are you in? Taylor? Sure. So we are in the business of making ideas a reality. We take people's ideas from a napkin concept uh, all the way to a real product. Wow. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a big picture. Spencer, anything to add to that? Yeah. So really, I think that we're in a pretty unique position where we can... Um, bring in a lot of customers um, who may not have access to larger dev shops and don't really know where to start in the technology industry. And they can come in and meet with us and we can help them flesh out their idea and get a good process figured out so that we can take them through that and get them to where they can start a business. Okay. Start a business. So, so it's, uh, I, I guess we should introduce it more fully. Uh, you generally produce applications for people, apps on, on yep. my phone or on my like, computer. Yep. Uh, so tell, p tell people what that means. Yeah, so we make uh, mobile apps and web apps. Uh, web apps are a little bit uh, newer of a concept in the last couple of years. And it's basically a more interactive website that's usually connected to the cloud. Um, so we're working on a lot of those this year and then mobile apps that would go on your iPhone or Android. Okay, yep. just wanted to back up and make the big picture of what it is sure. you do, uh, apps, mobile apps, web apps. Uh, yep. It seems like that's the way the world is going, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, how often do you, how, you never go through a day when you, <laughs> when you don't hear there's an app for that or check oh, right. our app or view our app here and that's right. uh, apps everywhere, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And you can help people get there, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, our, our viewers, guys, um, often want to know, uh, you know, why someone got a business started. I mean, how, how old is the business, Taylor? Uh, we're a little over two years. A little now. over two yep. years. And uh, why are you guys in this business? Why did you start the business, Taylor? So I started the business um, mainly from some passion that I developed while I was at, in school still uh, at UNO. Um, I was doing freelance development for lots of different clients, entrepreneurs, small businesses. Um, mostly local and uh, really started to see a, a trend of these people kind of struggling through the process so it was the process of what the process of finding a developer getting set up making sure it's the right price making sure you're getting what you paid for uh, making sure that the quality is good on the end and, and that the product is supported and a lot of the time you have to piece those parts out and there's a lot of different shops that you have to work with to get to get everything that you might need. And it's, it's kind of like building a house. I mean, yeah. there's a general contractor, then you need the graphics person and the yeah. developer and the, the cloud person. And, and and you guys put all that together? Yep, we, we strive to kind of get a nice pipeline put together so that we can uh, get people all the way from something that's very basic, you know, starting idea, pen and paper maybe, and take them to, let's look at, you know, finding some customers. Let's look at what it takes to build the thing, how much is it going to cost? Uh, you okay. know, what are some different options and, and things that, like that. That's great for entrepreneurs and established businesses, right? Absolutely, yeah. And, and I got away from the question. I'm sorry. Back to why? I mean, what what's the root motive of the launch of AppSki? Sure. Well, I I really am a creative guy. I love ideas. I love uh, seeing passionate people work on their ideas. I love changing changing this space. I love solving problems. So getting to do all of that on a very regular basis with lots of different people, um, keeps it interesting and, and really exciting. And you told me beforehand something about uh, 
you, you, you like the look on their faces or whatever when you oh, yeah. deliver? Absolutely. I mean, how about that, Spencer? When, yeah. What happens when you deliver a final product? So it's, it's always really exciting. Um, usually it's more than just the delivery date. We're in the last couple yeah. months when we- spent a lot of time with them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> um, and for some of our bigger projects, the last couple months when you can start seeing things come together and you can see um, all of the like basic functionality is actually working and you can let the customer start trying it out then watching their excitement and um, see all of the ideas going on for how they're going to start getting customers involved and everything it's a really fun process to be well, and, and so you guys like being doing that within four people right yeah, yeah absolutely. anything else on that Spencer, uh, um, Spencer uh, Taylor <laughs> anything else on that uh, on piggyback on Spencer's comments um, well, I like that we get to work with not just businesses and, and kind of corporations, but we get to work with individuals who have ideas. Uh -huh. So that's coaching them not just, not just through building a project, but helping them actually make a product that's successful. Um, and that includes the customer research and the marketing and, and being able to help people strategize and think about that throughout the process is, um, it, it's been a really unique experience that I'm not sure that you get at a lot of other places. That's pretty cool. And I want to dovetail back into that when we go further into your story. Uh, and then before that, I wanted to throw out, I mean, for, for people watching, the if you're, I mean, a lot of w viewers, uh, guys, are um, people who want to launch something. Sure. And people who have an idea and have that, that cocktail napkin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should add some cocktail napkin props here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and want to take it beyond that. And, yeah. and uh, um, tell more about some of your projects or a project where someone came to you and said, I've got this idea. <laughs> what, what happened next? Sure. Um, ahead, Spencer. So we have an app that we launched in October called GiveSite Global. And um, it was with a team from Physicians Thrive here in town. Um, and the people that run it are the most stereotypical idea people that you've ever <laughs> seen, where they would come in every meeting with tons of stuff to roll off. Um, so they were one where... <laughs> the meetings went two or oh, three yeah. hours. They, we <laughs> definitely ideas. had some long ones. Um, <laughs> but they were ones where we were always able to bring them in, get some exciting new ideas, even just developing the app even further. Um, and so now it's up on the App Store, and um, in the wow. last, uh, bas the basic idea of the app is that it converts your workout calories into donation dollars. Wow. And oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in give me a little bit of motivation because I was just thinking the other day, like, oh, there's a treadmill. I snore, but if I had uh -huh. tied that into right. something Absolutely. else bigger than yourself, that's yep. brilliant. Yeah. And so they have about 350 users now, maybe more than that at this yeah. point. Oh. Um, and in the last two and a half months, they've raised over a million calories. And about so, ten thousand dollars worth of wow. yeah. donations. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So and you took them from napkin to yeah, yeah. To, to th how many to how many people again? How many of you are, are about three hundred and fifty on there right yeah. now? Wow, um, awesome. And that, that's that's just the start, really. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, everything yeah. is evergreen and builds and goes. Right. I'm, I'm familiar with that concept. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. That's a well. You're already talking about this, guys. But I wanted to get an idea of. My, my third big question is, you know, what makes AppSki different? I mean, I can throw a rock and hit a couple of development shops or uh, contractors or whatever in the IT world, sure. the information technology world. Yep. How is AppSki different than those? Taylor, go ahead. Sure. So there's a couple of reasons um, that I think AppSki is a little different than even some of the other players in our local space here. Um, and one of those is that we have an in-house graphic design team. Um, so we have award-winning designers on our team that work with our developers day in and day out creating the products that we make for customers. Um, so that's really unique because a lot of the time you might have to go get graphic design done somewhere else. They may not specialize in mobile, de mobile design development, um, which is all kind of a unique, uh, a unique space that you have to have a certain skill set to really understand. And that's important, because I'll just jump right in. Uh, the, I have a client of mine, a marketing sales client, I'm helping her to build her business. She's got a, a nice website, but guess what? I was looking at it on my phone. Yeah. Not so nice. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can handle that for me, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. well, okay. And uh, and so your graphic people in house they make a difference. They definitely make a difference, um, and it allows us to create really exciting products that are well designed, um, really thoughtful. I've gotten feedback from users throughout the process. 
um, so that we know for a fact that this product is going to do well because we, we've spent the time and effort up front. Sure. So. Yeah. sure. Spencer, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I think the other piece is it make us unique really come back to our missions of making technology more available to people that typically wouldn't even know where to start mm -hmm. and also training junior developers and giving them a chance to build themselves into a really strong development skill set um, so that if when they do come ready to move on from AppSki then they can get a lot of exciting opportunities or maybe even start a business of their own. And someone who's going to start a business with y'all um, it, sh it has to be a software related business or a technology related type of thing. I mean, you're not going to help them start a, a sporting goods store or retail or something like that, are you? Or so we can help with aspects of that, right? Yeah. So, um, well, of course, you wouldn't want to start a sporting goods store <laughs> yeah, without right. having an online presence. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. we can help with uh, like e commerce uh, options. So we've done that before where you can start selling your products online. And okay. we have some local uh, people who do that both online and in physical locations. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. We can help with the branding aspect. So that's, mm -hmm. that's bringing in really understanding the core of your business, um, creating a name, creating a logo, creating an audience. Getting your graphics people involved again. Yep, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So from that front, getting set up with the things that a business needs, Absolutely, we touch businesses that are not technology, you know, not technology okay. yeah. related. But everybody, I mean, not everybody, but most businesses need to have some kind of yeah. technology presence. One, yep. right. one would think and hope these days. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and so that's that's the big picture, uh, and you know, kind of the the why, the 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 what business you're in, and and you know how you're different and such. Um, let's back up a little bit to to that starting a couple years ago, and sure. we're gonna leave Spencer out of this because he's fairly new to the company. You yep. came what? Right. Uh, Six, uh, seven months ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, take us back, uh, Taylor. Um, you know, what What made you launch the company? And is this your first company? And yeah, sure. I know the answer, <laughs> but I got to ask it. Sure. <laughs> so um, if you want to back up all the way. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I think that's a great story. My very first interaction with, so I kind of grew up in the age of mobile apps. They started coming out when I was in eighth grade. Okay. Um, so You're one of those kids. Yeah, huh? I'm one of those kids. And I always <laughs> just kind of mess around with them and whatnot. And, had an Android phone. I used to hack all the time in high school and all that good stuff. So I kind of had a feel for it, but hadn't really started doing any, you know, solid development for it or anything. And I remember going to a, a family event um, in Burwell, Nebraska, middle of nowhere, and um, talking to a relative of mine. And um, basically, he said that he had made six grand um, building a mobile app, and all it did was it flashed police lights on the screen. Uh, and wow. he put it up on Android and got some ads. And, Who paid uh, six grand? Yeah, six grand screen? for that. So yeah, I think oh. it was ads and just you okay. know popularity. Wow. Um, so at that point, I was like 14 or 15. I was like, Ooh. I bet you I can do this. Uh, like I, bet I know you what I, I want to do right. when I grow up. Right. Or, I or like, no, I, I know what I want to do tomorrow. Oh, that's a lot yeah. of money, right? <laughs> so um, that was like an initial like first like. Uh, interest in mobile and then really I got started when I worked at um, a research lab at UNO um, so I took some programming classes in high school and then um, transitioned into the Applied Innovations Research Lab um, and actually Spencer had worked there, um, okay, you met there. Mm -hmm. after I had left so he, we both spent some time in the same lab um, and so I got put on mobile projects basically. I, okay. I, yeah, okay. I got there and, uh, and um, the professor had some cool research going on and wanted to put some of that into mobile apps and had nobody to do it. So mm -hmm. he handed me a 400 page book uh, about Objective-C programming language, which is not terribly straightforward or easy to learn and, no. and said, go for it. And so I spent a <laughs> summer um, before I was even a freshman learning uh, iOS development. Before you were in college? Like uh, the summer before. So really? Yeah. It, yep. Well, you weren't enrolled yet. How did you know the professor and how did you yeah. get the, all that? So it happened that I just met him in a, in a tour at the building. Oh, okay. So we went and uh, <laughs> did some touring and shadowing and okay. um, went through PKI and kind of was exploring the different programs that they had there and uh, met Dr. D uh, Doug Derrick is his name. And um, he, uh, he was like, hey, uh, y you want a job? <laughs> it's like, uh, sure. Oh, they paid good. you for this? Yeah, it was a paid gig oh, wow, and everything. Huh? Yeah, it was pretty cool. So you're 18 years old? Yep. You're such a slow starter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's people doing it now a lot younger than uh, I am. Yeah, that's fact. Yeah, for that sure. Is, that is for sure. Uh, well, um, what were some of the next steps? I mean, you went on to um, start some of your own contracting, independent contracting then after yep. you self-taught. You self-taught C++ or object or Objective C, yep. Objective C. Yeah, I self-taught. Okay. Um, self-taught on the basics of back end and data, database structures and things like that. Okay. 
Um, obviously took classes at UNO that helped bolster those things. Was your UNO major marketing business or was it the more development side? So we actually both have the same degree. Um, we both have an IT innovation degree okay, from, that's what it was, from yeah. Peter okay. Kewitt Institute and then we both actually have minors in computer science <laughs> and entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, so I wonder how you got this job. Yeah, we, had, we had very similar goals going yeah. through college, I think. Well, we didn't even really know each other yeah. until the last yeah. couple of years, so oh, that's funny. pretty interesting. Yeah, the Pete and repeat, they're yep. a clone, yeah. clone deal. And so when you're 18, you didn't you have some kind of a business doing, how, how did you get your business? How did you sure. decide to start that and so on? So uh, a friend of mine at the time, uh, um, actually my roommate at the time, um, we were both working out of the research lab and we were both pretty good programmers and had been learning and, and you know just kind of trying things together and stuff and um, we thought that it might be cool to go see if we could get some app development contracts. So we uh, spun up a company and came up with the name, uh, Activate Innovation was the name of that company. Okay. And we ran that just together, it was just me and him for about 18 months. And the goal of that company was to go out there and do what? We wanted to build apps for people. Okay, you're so, it's still in the app business at that point. Still in the app right business, still, yep. That early, okay. So I was doing the iOS development and uh, my partner was doing more of the Android development and some of the okay. back end. Um, and at the time there weren't a bunch of these fancy cloud tools and things like that, so we <laughs> had to do a lot more manual building on, on some of these things, but. Sounds familiar, uh, Spencer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we built uh, a couple different things and some went well, some didn't go well and things like that and made a little money, but. Um, eventually spun that company down um, just due to kind of partnership uh, issues and sure. just kind of getting into the school thing and it was getting yeah, really yeah. busy. You're still in college, right? Uh, no, I've actually graduated. Yeah. So, okay. so oh, at this time I was yeah, still in college, with, yes. With that, yeah. um, I'd have been now, yeah, yeah. Right then. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we were like 19 or 20 uh, mm -hmm. by the time that we kind of finished that. And then um, after that I kind of just uh, went and freelanced on my own for a while. Okay. So. I started bumping up my LinkedIn, which is huge uh, for this industry in general and, and some How many others. do you have on LinkedIn now? People I am over 1,500 now. Oh, good for you. Yeah, good so for that's you. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, our uh, head of business development, Jade Jensen, she's always trying to race and beat me. So she's at, <laughs> she's at like 900 and some, so okay. I'm trying to keep up. But. How many are you of two people at, on LinkedIn? I'm at a solid about 250. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I have a disadvantage. I, uh, I, I, I've got more years on it than you sure. guys together probably yeah. <laughs> and, and, and quite honestly because of uh, I think this program and the visibility with it um, I'm getting uh, you, you're too young to know the song there's a, a guy named Glenn Campbell okay. and he sang a song called the rhinestone cowboy oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the rhinestone cowboy has a phrase in it that says I'm getting cards and letters from people I don't even know oh, yeah. and so sure. I've joked that uh, get people uh, reaching out to connect to me on LinkedIn. And uh, I think the, the, the lesson there is, is not that I'm so smart or anything like that. The lesson is simply that uh, these tools exist. And I mean, yeah. tell us how you use the tools, Spencer. I mean, you're, you're kind of new with it a little bit, but uh, um, what, do you, what do you see the potential as? What do you see Jade doing? <laughs> what do you see, hi Jade, by the way. Uh, what do you see um, Taylor doing with it? Well, what's, what's actually funny is I probably wouldn't have this job without LinkedIn, ah. even with how little I use it. There you go. <laughs> um, because uh, like we discussed before, Taylor and I didn't know each other terribly well, but we had judged a few competitions together and um, we have mutual friends and things like that. So we were both familiar with each other, but beyond that, not really. Um, and one night uh, I read an article about a direction that app development was going and I just messaged him on LinkedIn and I was like, hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And we ended up talking about it for a while and then okay. after about an hour of discussing it, he was like, what would you think about coming and being my CTO? <laughs> so, <laughs> you had not met him? Uh, we had met oh, a few times. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, and, okay, I, okay, and okay. I knew of Spencer through mutual friends. Gotcha. So I knew yeah. that he was good. I knew he was good at what <laughs> yeah. he does. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of had that had that feeling, I guess, uh, instinct or whatever. So, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, these tools, I mean, are, they're very helpful, the LinkedIn, the Facebook, and, and, and so on. Uh, what, um, what is your role as a CTO? What do you, what do, you do there all day? <laughs> um, all night? Well, <laughs> since, uh, since we're a small team, even our developers or our designers still have to wear a lot of hats. So when you're a CTO or the CEO, or even Jade is our COO, yep. um, we pretty much do everything we can. So um, I've kind of landed in the financial like forecasting role. I do our project management. 
I am kind of in charge of leading our internal development, but that's usually just whenever the ideas yeah. come up, then okay. we pursue yeah. that. I mean, um, how do you all stay focused? I mean, there, as a small company with, I mean, I visited your office, you're, you're structured. I've, I've seen the, the, the work boards and all the sticky yeah. notes and oh, the flow yeah. charts and all yeah. that. But I mean, when you have a whole bunch of new potential clients and present clients, and they're, they're in there with all of their scattered ideas, yep. How do you stay focused in, some, in something like that? So it is not easy. <laughs> um, we usually manage about 12 to 20 projects at a time. Wow. Uh, With a staff of how many? Uh, we have eight right now. Eight right yeah. now, wow. Um, so we have seven full-time and one part-time. Okay. And they uh, all pretty much come in-house? It's not, they're yep, not working they're all, they're all from Omaha. Um, yeah, okay. Yep, so um, it is, it, like Spencer said, it's, um, it's a lot of hats, it's a lot of bouncing around, it's a lot of figuring out what's the priority for the day, for the week, yeah. um, for the month sometimes. And um, we, so we've actually picked up a couple of tools that we use now that, um, that we weren't using actually um, when we spoke last. Do share, uh, what tools, Spencer? Um, the main one that I use for our project management is a much more robust flow of Trello than okay. we had ever Trello. used before. Trello, yep. We tried all kinds of project management tools mm -hmm. and they were all just kind of missing things. And yep. um, for now, Trello is filling the, or checking the most boxes for us. Okay. And there's still some things that we sure. um, could want from it, but it okay. keeps us on track for yep. the most part. Got it. Anything else? Um, on Good. the sales side, we've just started kind of implementing the HubSpot flow. Oh, so um, yeah. we're, we're just using the free account right now, which is nice that they have that. Okay. Uh, most, people, most people don't actually know that, but yeah. Their, their CRM or the, the kind of client resource management tool is free. Okay. Um, so sure. even small businesses can jump in on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, so. I'm gonna go back, I, I got off track again. You, you got too many, <laughs> too many interesting <laughs> angles here. Uh, but I, I do wanna get in uh, back to your early days when you're, you're pounding on doors and, yeah. and how you discovered uh, to, to get out there. I mean, the show is for people who wanna start or have started and wanna get it to the next level. How did you get to your next level after your uh, independent consultant out there doing yeah. contract work? So um, I actually took a break from uh, freelancing mm -hmm. and decided to teach a little bit. Okay. Um, so I, uh, who, um, I met Shauna, um, actually Shauna Dorsey, um, when I was at UNO. Who was on this show. Who was also on the show. Yes. Um, <laughs> fantastic community member here. Yes. And so I, uh, she had started Interface, the web school, um, a couple years prior. and. I thought that it might be cool to, to reach out to her and, and see if she needed any help. So um, she kind of set me up as an intern there and we worked on some stuff together, worked on some curriculum, uh, taught a few workshops and things like that, uh, mostly around mobile development and web development. And um, eventually, um, Shauna was basically like, hey, you need to go start AppSkey. Like, <laughs> you, you really should just do it. Just go. Because um, I had talked <laughs> to her. You can't be contained. Right, yeah. So I had talked to her about it and kind of just gotten her advice about it about a year before I even approached her about a job. Um, because we had, that would, that would have been my senior year and we were doing our capstone project. Okay. So yeah. AppSkey was my capstone project. Okay. So I spent about a year researching and Now when you're doing it. it as a capstone project, and for those who don't know, what caps, tell them what a capstone project is, Spencer. Um, capstone is the last class that we take in our general curriculum as basically this is your final opportunity to prove that your last years of college weren't for nothing. <laughs> um, so the IT innovation capstone is actually to start a business. Okay. And yeah. so you have to spend a whole semester going through the whole customer research and building okay. out the idea. And then second semester is you build the technology to make it possible. Gotcha. That is, is that, uh, I think you kind of answered my, my question was, uh, was going to be, did you do your capstone based on academic thing or was it to actually start AppSkey? Yeah, so... Um, you kind of answered that. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> both of us actually did uh, totally, obviously, independent ideas. Um, and and the, the way the capstone works at UNO is you do it by yourself. Right. Um, right. Which is different than some other capstones, like I think marketing and business, they do team projects. Okay. Um, so it was interesting to be by yourself for a year working on a concept. And you work through the initial um, 100 customer interview uh, Tell us process. what that means. Um, so there's this concept out there called the Lean Business Canvas or Lean Business Model, and um, you can search it online. There's tons of free resources about it, lots of uh, good examples. But uh, the idea is that you want to go talk to 100, uh, 100 potential clients or customers before you launch your business. 
So, and I think um, that's so important. I yeah. mean, I, you, you mentioned that in May when we did the first show, and I, I find myself sometimes uh, keeping, you know, my, I'm an innovative uh, in, um, person who's trying to uh, you know, iterate as sure. I go with, with the program, with the content marketing, and so yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I say, well, would Taylor say I've, I've talked to 100 people yet or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you're, you, you're number 39. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I, yeah. That's just brilliant to keep track of it, I think. Uh, yep. Have you uh, experienced anything like that along the way? Or are you oh, part absolutely. of the philosophy here at um, Epstein? Yeah, I did a summer cohort my freshman year of college, and that's when I was first introduced to that concept. Um, and I tried to spin out a few companies going through college, and some of them had more success than others, but all of, of them had that customer aspect um, to like, it. Like Jim Rose said on an episode with me, uh, you either win or you learn. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I should, I should be the smartest guy around yeah. by now. <laughs> so what do we call that? Ask 100 people? Is that what the concept is called? Yeah, I would just kind of, uh, if you're going to look it up, I would look up Lean, lean Canvas or Lean Business oh, Model. Oh, that's part of that, yeah. Yep. Well, it, it's just so brilliant to uh, be able to think, I mean, because so many people, especially in software, at least it used to be before the Agile and all that, is, uh, is uh, oh, I'm going to start a start a business and, and, right. and they'll work for six months on something and, and release something, whether it's a yeah. software or, or something else, yep. and nobody wants it. Right. <laughs> like, right. shouldn't you have found that out a little sooner? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and so it's brilliant. It's simple, but, it, but it's brilliant. So, um, well, tell us guys, uh, with any new business, and you're just over two years into it, there, there's speed bumps along the way. Uh, yeah. um, Taylor, tell us, uh, some of the speed bumps you've hit then sure. in Napsky uh, and, and what you've learned from them. So one of the biggest lessons that I've learned and continue to learn <laughs> is how to properly quote projects. Ah, okay, yeah. so that's, Do you have it figured out yet? No, <laughs> we're closer, we're closer, but we've it's, gone it's, better. It's um, an evolving process and because the technology is changing that that even changes yeah, on occasion. Good point. Um, but uh, that's something that so when you're in a freelance position and it's just you, it's, it's pretty easy to right. cut people a deal, right? Right. Hey, I can do this for 10 grand for one person, that's good money, hey, and yeah. uh, makes, makes your time worth it, but for a team, it doesn't always make sense. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest transition in two years is figuring out how to go from quoting like a freelancer to quoting like an agency. Right, yeah, um, yeah. And, and being because you have a lot more overhead that. going on with, right. all the, with all the people there. Yep. I mean, I mean, how do you go, and this, we could go for hours on this, but I mean, how do you say, okay, I'm gonna need, you know, 20 hours of this person, I'm gonna need 100 hours of this person, and uh, I mean, how do you sure. mix all that together? I'll let Spencer cover that, yeah. um, that's his role, so. So a lot of that actually comes back to the Trello stuff where we keep it very exact, our counts of people, so we can kind of get a good gauge of our capacity. Okay, well, the, the tools yeah. help on that, so. And we, well, we try to budget about 80 hours a month per project. Um, okay. Just as a company, mm -hmm. so and that's a f shifting target too. I'm yep. sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, I, I have to wrap up here. Uh, I thank you here. You start the company at age 19. You're already up to eight employees. You've got yep. a good man here who just joined you. Uh, great story, Epsky. How do people reach you? Well, you can check us out on uh, all the all the social medias at, at hello Apsky, um, or check out our website at apsky.io, um, or come to one of the community events that we run. Well, and uh, these guys are everywhere. Uh, they're, just check out social media. You'll yep. see, you'll see Sp uh, Spencer and Taylor all around. Uh, and uh, we'll have the contact information on the end of the show. And I thank you for joining us here on the Grow Your Biz show. Please tune in for the next episode and visit uh, growmedia.com for all the details going on with me, as, including my upcoming seminars. Thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for having thank me. Good to see you. Good to see you.